Chapter 7 Miss Smith saw a louse in my hair that had not been there before the crowded train ride. Not that when I got it mattered to her. In a shrill voice, she insisted we take baths immediately, that minute. She said, staring at my foot, Can you get up the stairs? What happened to you? Got run over by a brewer's cart, I said. Miss Smith flinched. I went up the stairs on my bottom, one at a time. Miss Smith took us into a white room with a big bath, poured hot water straight from a tap, which was fascinating, and gave us our privacy, whatever that meant. There was soap and thick towels. I took a little cloth and rubbed soap into it and rubbed my face and neck. The cloth came away gray. I rubbed soap into Jamie's hair and my own, then turned the tap back on to rinse it out. It was wonderful, the bath. Afterward, the dirty water ran out a hole into the bottom of the tub instead of having to be scooped out like at home. Jamie clean grinned from inside a white towel. I wrapped a towel around myself and let my hair drip onto my shoulders. Posh, this place, Jamie said. I nodded. It was a fine place. I didn't care if Miss Smith was awful. We were used to that with ma'am. Miss Smith knocked on the door and asked us where our things were. I didn't know what she meant. We'd finished the food I'd brought, and I'd left the empty paper bag on the train. Your other clothes, she said. You can't possibly put what you were wearing back on. The other kids on the train had had parcels. But not us, I said. We're going to have to. That's all we've got. She opened the door and looked me up and down. I stuck my right foot behind my left, but it was too late. Brewer's cart nothing, she said crossly, opening the door wider. You got a club foot, and you're bleeding all over the floor. She swung her hand toward me. I ducked. She froze. I wasn't going to hit you, she said. I was going to help you. Sure, because she was so happy to have me bleeding on her floor. She knelt and grabbed my bad foot. I tried to pull it away, but she held tight. Interesting, she said. King Richard III had a club foot. I've never seen one before. I made myself think of the ponies. The pony beside the house. The pony running next to the train. Me riding the yellow pony. I went away into my head and gave myself ponies. And that way I could bear Miss Smith touching me. Right, she said. We'll go to the doctor tomorrow. Find out what we should do for you. We won't. He won't want her, Jamie said. Nice people hate that ugly foot. Miss Smith let out a short, harsh laugh. You're in luck then, she said, because I am not a nice person at all. She was not a nice person, but she cleaned up the floor. She was not a nice person, but she bandaged my foot in a white piece of cloth and gave us two of her own clean shirts to wear. They hung past our knees. She combed or cut the tangles out of our hair, which took ages, and then she made a big pan of scrambled eggs. It's all the food I have, she said. I have been shopping this week. I wasn't expecting you. All the food she had, she said, except there was butter on the slightly stale bread and sugar in the tea. The eggs looked slimy, but I was hungry enough to eat anything, and they tasted fine. When I wiped my plate with my bread, she gave me another spoonful of eggs. What am I supposed to do with you? she asked. It was such an odd question. Nothing, I said. Ada stays inside, Jamie offered. I take care of him, I said. You won't have to. Miss Smith frowned. How old are you? This question made me squirt. Jamie's six, I said. Ma'am said, he's got to go to school. He's awfully small for six, Miss Smith said. Ma'am said, and surely you're older than he is, she continued. Don't you go to school? Not with that ugly foot, Jamie said. Miss Smith snorted. That foot's a long way from her brain. She tapped her knife against the edge of her plate. Birthdays, when, names, real names, not this Smith nonsense. Ada and Jamie, I said. Smith, that's all I know. She glared at me. I glared back. After a few moments, her gaze softened. You really don't know? I looked at the eggs on my plate. I asked once, I said. Ma'am said it didn't matter. Miss Smith drew in her breath. Okay, she said. Jamie six, you're older. Shall we say nine? I couldn't tell her tell by her voice how angry she was. I shrugged. Nine was fine. I knew my numbers, eight, nine, ten. I'll write your parents, Smith Smith said. Lady Thornton will get me their address, and I'll write them. They'll tell me. She looked us up and down. What does your father do? Nothing, I said. He's dead. Dead for years. Either that or gone. I didn't know which. If I squeezed my eyes shut and concentrated, I thought I could remember him, but only as a sort of blurry shadow, a tall man, quiet, not like ma'am. Oh, said Miss Smith. I'll write your mother then. Miss Smith was not a nice person, but the bed she put us in was soft and clean, with smooth, thin blankets and warm, thicker ones. She pulled the curtain across the window to shut out the light. I was so, so tired. Miss, I asked, whose is the pony? I had to know before I went to sleep. 
Miss Smith paused, her hand on the curtain. She looked out the window. His name is Butter, she said. Becky gave him to me. Who's Becky? Jamie asked, but she didn't reply.